All right, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? All right, I'm glad to hear that. My name is Chris. I'm going to be here to show for you guys today. And we've got lots and lots of animals for you guys to see at the zoo. Have you guys been here for a little while already? Yeah. All right, let's see how much you guys saw there. I'm going to ask you a few trick questions. Do you guys remember seeing the tallest animal on the planet? Yep. The giraffe, that's right. You remember how many there were? Two. Two. Let's double that. No. Anybody see more than two? Four, that's right. We have four giraffes, tallest animal on the planet. Patrick is the big one. He's the biggest and he's the oldest. He will come right up to the fence and he has got a 16 inch long tongue. Comes right up to the fence. Now we've also got the biggest, tallest bird that also is the fastest running and it comes from the biggest egg. Yep. Ostrich, that's right. You were pretty excited about knowing the ostrich. That's good. I like to see enthusiasm in the crowd. This is good. Ostrich, long legs, can't fly, do, do not underestimate an ostrich. They are very fast, powerful birds. They could kick a person my size right over. Very fast. They can outrun a human and they are very strong. They don't have to fly. They'll just run you down. Ostriches have eggs like this. This is last year's egg that didn't hatch out with a hole in it. Very, very strong. They've got at least 10 of these eggs on the ground in the back. We've got two girls and a boy. They're laying those? eggs all spring and summer long. So we're waiting to see if any of them hatch out. The now this one here is so strong. If you put it on the ground and you stand on it, it won't break. That's a, a very strong egg. These guys here have to be strong because on the ground in Africa, lots of animals are looking for this egg to eat it. This egg would take 22 chicken eggs to fill up. So this guy here, if you're an egg eater, this is the one you're looking for. Now we've also got another animal from Africa, belongs to that. Anybody know what that might be from? Yep. Porcupine, that's right. Now this one is not like our Canadian porcupines. Our Canadian porcupines will climb a tree, sleep up there during the day. Our guys will also sleep during the day, but they do not climb trees. These ones are so big and so strong, they puff out their quills, they wrap them all together, and if that doesn't work, they actually get the animal and they chase after it. Even something like a lion or a hyena or a leopard. They use these quills that can be two and a half feet long, razor sharp, to chase an animal as big as a lion away. Now these things are made from the same material as your fingernails. So just imagine trying to chase away a full-grown lion with your fingernails. That's what a porcupine can do with its quills. So this is a very, very good form of defense. And you'll see our porcupines in the back. We've got a big boy and a big girl back there. They're sleeping in a porcupine pile in the back corner. That's what they do during the day. If you want them to move, you can throw in some banana. They don't see very well, but they'll hear it. They move around, they find it with their nose, they eat it, they go back to sleep. That is the entire porcupine show. That's it, that's all they do. At night, they're out moving around though. Actually, if you guys have any questions, we're gonna get to the questions at the end of the show, okay? Now, we've got a snake. You guys wanna see a snake? Yeah! All right, let's bring out Duke, and you'll have a chance to touch the snake. Now, this is Duke and Dan, all right? Duke is the yellow one, Dan is the gray one, okay? The yellow one you can touch on the back of the tail. Please don't touch the gray one on the tail, okay? Now, Duke is a boy, and boy snakes are always smaller than girl snakes. The big, big yellow snake we have at the end is just like this one. It's a girl. It's an albino Burmese python, just like this one here, but it's a girl, so it's bigger. It's 15 pounds, or 15 feet, over 100 pounds already. It will get to be twice that size. It's already a big snake, but it will be up to 30 feet long, 200 pounds. Big, big snake. These guys are so big, they sit on the ground and they wait for food to walk by. They're not tree climbers like the boa constrictors we have in the reptile house. They sit and they wait, they have no venom, so they can't bite like go and then go find their feet later. These guys have to hang on, they've got lots of curved sharp teeth, hang on, wrap around, swallow them in a hole. This one here can eat something seven times the size of its head. That's pretty impressive stuff. They can swim, climb trees. They don't even produce their own heat. So if it's too cold, they just sit and they wait for it to warm up. This guy here has an enclosure that's 95 degrees. So he's warm, he's moving around. He's cold, he doesn't move at all. He'll sit and he'll wait. He only eats once a month. He could go for six months without food. He could go for a year, he'd lose some weight, but he could go for an entire year just waiting for food or waiting for it to warm up. These guys here are very good at sitting and waiting for food. Now snakes are hunters. They have to catch their food 
either a lion or a tiger or a hawk or a snake. They're all hunters. They're all meat eaters. So this guy here will be on the ground waiting for something to go by. Now, it doesn't have arms or legs, so it can't run after its animal like a cheetah. It's got no hands, so it can't grab it like a monkey. It's got no claws, so it can't dig like a lizard. It's got no ears, so it can't hear anything. It's got no eyelids, so it can't protect its eyes. Some reptiles have three sets of eyelids, snakes have none. They don't even see very well, so these guys here use camouflage. Now you're going to notice, we're going to put him down on the ground, he is going to disappear into the ground like the, with the grass and the rocks. Ready? Go on. Can you see him? Really? You guys can see him? All right, oh, because he's moving. Oh, sure, if he's moving, he's easy to see. Otherwise, these guys, they're invisible. Really? You guys can see him? Alright, if you're bright yellow, and this is how fast you move, and you look like a 10-foot giant banana, you're in trouble. These guys in the wild do not blend in. See how he's got his patterns here? That would normally be a black and a brown. See, the fly saw it, too. They are right on him. These guys here would normally blend in. You could walk beside a 20-foot snake and not even know it's there. The snake would be big enough to eat, say, you. You wouldn't know it was there. The snake would know you were coming because it would feel the vibrations and it would stick out its tongue and it would be able to tell exactly what direction you were coming from, how big you were, and what kind of animal you were as well. That's what snakes are good at. They can sit and wait for the right type of food and the right temperature to come by. Now we're going to take Duke back and we're going to bring out an animal that can show off with lots of colors. It's got reds, blues, greens, and yellows just like Duke. Now, Maximus is, yeah, that's what everybody says, he looks like Simba. Good boy, buddy. Now, Maximus is only five weeks old. He stays pretty close to me because we're the ones that feed him, and he's been with us since he was born. He was born here at the zoo. His mom and dad are the lions that you're going to see out over there. She gave birth to Maximus and a brother and a sister. She gave birth. Looked at them, had no idea what they were, and walked away. That's not an option, parents, all right? Just for her. She had no idea what they were, so she didn't even know what they were. So we've had him since he was one day old. Now, every three hours, 24 hours a day, we give him milk. He gets a bottle of milk every three hours. He just had his lunch right now. You can tell he's got a little milk belly going on there. In two weeks, he is going to be starting to eat small pieces of skinless, boneless chicken. By the end of the summer, he'll be eating an entire chicken a day, and he'll be, well, he'll be almost your size. Right now, he's learning how to climb. He's learning how to use his claws. You can see his little claws coming out there. And he has spots that he would use for camouflage. Remember that all animals that are hunters, whether you're a snake or a lion, they have to use camouflage to catch their food. So at this age, they're using their camouflage to make sure they don't get caught by any other animals. Baby lions in the wild have to be very, very careful. These guys here, even with mom, dad, the whole pride look out for them. Lots of food and lots of space. Only two out of every ten of the lions born in the wild survive to be adults. So it is very, very dangerous to be a baby lion. Maximus doesn't have to worry about any of that. Nobody's going to try and catch Maximus. He just worries about his bottle. Now, Maximus is going to grow to be nine feet long, 600 pounds. His dad is the big one over there with the mane. That's what he's going to look like in about four, four and a half years. He will be a very, very big boy. Right now, Maximus is really only king of the bottom. That's really all he's got going on right now. But he will get to be very big. Once he's on meat, he'll start to grow very, very fast. Good boy, buddy. All right, you ready? We're going to take Maximus back, and we are going to bring out another one of our babies. You ready, buddy? You ready? All right, good boy. See how the training's coming on? Good stuff. He was going to the door anyway. <laughs> he knows the bottle's on the other side. Now, we've got lots of cute babies here at the zoo, but if you're in cute babies, okay, fine. I like the ugly babies. Ugly babies are the way to go. We've got lots of ugly babies for you, too. We've got a baby alpaca over there that's a week and a half old. Big eyes, funny hair, bad teeth. The whole family looks kind of funny. That's what alpacas are supposed to look like. We've got baby lemurs, they're pretty good looking. Baby given over there, really good looking baby. We've got lots of baby deer, they're, they're pretty good looking babies. My boy Malik is not a pretty baby. He's, um, well he's Malik, and that's really all we can say about him. So Malik is a baby baboon. Yeah, oh yeah, oh he's gorgeous, yeah. Now, he is a baby baboon that's only six and a half.